YouTube family, what's up? I love you guys so very much. I hope everybody is doing well. So, there's a couple things I want to address in this video. The first one I want to address is uh, a dream that I had like a month or two ago that I just just been meditating on trying to figure out if I'm supposed to share it or if it's supposed to be for me or or how it all you know intertwines you know how we wrestle with the things of the Lord just to be certain that you know it's him and um, that he wants us to put it out there and the second one is an insane realization that just came to me through the Holy Spirit man it's just like this it blew my mind um, but first let me tell you about this dream so in this dream what happened was it's based around uh, tribulation and it was it's explaining the mindset of that some people have versus the reality of what it's gonna be um, so some people have this um, expectation that if they you know if they miss the rapture either because they they're not willing to give up some of their sins or saying well this is worth going through tribulation for with that type of mindset or with the uh, post-trib belief um, if you have faith in post-trib then you won't be able to go in pre um, because your faith isn't in the pre and you know everything in the kingdom of God uh, operates in faith so if your faith is in post then you won't you'll get what you have faith in um, that's just how that works um, but aside from that, so the, the expectation that people have is I can get a whole bunch of supplies, I can get a nice building, I can do all these things to be prepared for a tribulation. So when it comes, I'll you know I'll be ready. But the truth of the matter is, no matter how much you prepare, you can't outrun God or you can't outthink God and his judgments upon the world. So you will be found and it, it, it will be a thousand times harder than you ever will think so in this dream it started off I walked into like this the first floor of this office building and um, I understood they were in preparation of something and they had it decked out I mean so I, I went through like this tour of how they had it set up and the lady who was giving the tour was like a like the leader slash like the genius and the brains behind it all and she was like look we got offices set up over here to continue things as they were. We got uh, this cell here just in case anybody decides to get crazy. We can lock them up. That probably won't happen, but we have that there and we have this quarantine area just in case anybody does this. We have all these things in preparation. There's no way we can be uh, caught off guard. There's no way. Um, and I was thinking, man, like, you're right. This place got, this got everything. You got food. You got this. It's, it's laid out. Um, so I was like, all right then. Um, and then I, it skipped, you know how dreams do that. It skipped, but then it was almost like a movie trailer where it was like at the bottom, I saw that it said four years later, it was literally like I was watching a movie. It was like four years later. Right. And we know at the, around that time, that's when literally Satan is unleashed. Uh, three and a half, four year mark is when Satan is released. Um, and it said four years later, and I didn't start off in the office building. I had to take a journey to get there. And it was my understanding of what the world would be like. And it was just like, it was all abandoned buildings. Um, you know, I had to, I was so afraid for my life that, I, excuse me, that I couldn't even show my face. Like I would hide behind every single rock. I would hide behind every single um, just crevice I could find trying to keep my face away from the things trying to get uh, get me. And I was making my way to this office building going to go check on these people because um, for some reason I knew I had to go back there. So I'm making my way back. I'm hiding my face. I knew at any point in time I could get shot by a straight bullet. I knew at any point in time I could die and I just had to accept that fact. So skip ahead. I finally make my way into the building. And literally, it's just chaos. It is just chaos. So I walk in the building, and the first thing I see is those offices. I see people screaming and fighting. I see the papers throwing up. I see them fighting each other. And there's like four people in there screaming and fighting and not and just losing their complete mind. No order whatsoever. 
Then I walk down the hallway and I go to use the elevator, the elevator that I used the first time to go like upstairs and look at the cells and stuff, or the, uh, not the cells, the, like the quarantine area and the little cell just in case anybody got crazy. So I used the elevator and I used it the first time and it was perfect. It went up, ding. You know, I thought nothing of it. I stepped on it this time. It was wobbly. It was like torn down. I thought I wasn't even going to make it up the um, uh, the shaft or whatever you call it. And it was just, it was a horrible elevator. It was broken down, run down, terrible. Nobody was keeping up with it. Then I make my way upstairs. The elevator, you know, it, it makes it up. I walk out. And I see the lady who gave me the tour the first time. She's just shaking her head. She's uh, uh, fiddling with, like, uh, syringes and all that type of stuff, trying to figure out, you know, what the problem is. And she, she just looks at me shaking her head. And she just goes, I don't know what, what happened. I don't know what went wrong. But it's been like this for a long time. And I looked at the cell. There was uh, a person just a full-out straight jacket just hitting his head. There were other people in there screaming and cursing. Um, there was little, like, uh, not little children, but, like, um, teenagers who just completely lost their minds. Um, in the quarantine area, they were just shaking and rocking. It was just not good. It was just complete, total, um, just a nightmare to see all of that at once um, and just see how much of a difference the tribulation can make just in those four years we had it was literally so set out and it was just it was so evident that they had it all figured out but no matter what they had planned there were things that happened that they couldn't plan for and those things uh, eventually became their downfall but I woke up and I was just like Lord whoa that's heavy and usually like I dream pretty vividly um, especially if I'm supposed to remember it and share it. I do dream pretty vividly. But I've never had the parts of where, like, it's explaining what's happening. Like, four years later, that's that's a new thing for me. Um, so I knew I was supposed to share this one pretty early on. But I was still like, Lord, help me, you know, make sure I'm going to deliver it right. Um, but, yeah, family, um, I think I'm going to save the... the the other part of this, not the dream, but the other realization that I have for another video, um, just because I don't want it to be too long and take up too much of your time, but yeah, so that was, that was my dream, family, excuse me, but yes, please make sure our hearts are prepared, because the coming of the Lord is beyond sooner than what we can ever imagine, and I know you guys keep hearing that, and you're thinking it's the boy who called wolf, but I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, something about 2020 just, it sounds like it's a rapture year, if you ask me. Um, I'm not claiming dates, obviously, but I'm just looking at what's going down. The peace deal, you know, got recently revealed. The Antichrist has got to come and confirm it. There are shows called, like, The Messiah and The Temptation of Christ, which they depict Jesus as gay. They, um... They have a false messiah, which is going to be the Antichrist, which is from, like, the uh, the story is from, like, the Islam perspective. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on that's not of Christ, and he ain't going to deal with it too much longer. Um, we have many, many brothers and sisters in Christ getting revelations of just dream after dream after dream or word after word. Um, and yes, we have to be discerning, but there comes a time where you just... You sit back and you realize and you take a step back from our comfortable lives and you actually look at what's going around the world and you go, oh, Jesus has to be coming soon. Um, so, yeah, that's all. I just wanted to encourage you guys slash give you some some insight. Um, but again, we don't have to worry about any of that stuff once we put our faith in Christ. He's just letting you know for those who are thinking, yo, I, I want to stay here and... You know, I can make it out the other side. That option may be seeming good on this side. We, we make those decisions on full bellies and no scars on us. And we say, yeah, I think I can do that. But then as soon as we get into it, as soon as the pressure gets on, the first thing we say is, man, I wish I would have went. Um, so just have that in mind that when we're when we put our faith into something, when we say, Lord Jesus, 
keep me here for whatever reason or I'm not willing to give up certain sins because I know I can make it through uh, the tribulation or whatever. Don't be a foolish virgin. You know, there's five wise, five foolish. As soon as the bridegroom came, the first thing they thought was, man, I need oil. The, the first thing they thought was, man, I, we got to go too. They weren't thinking, oh, I can make it until the second wedding or I can make it until death or whatever. Nah, they were thinking immediately as soon as it happened, they were goofing off. They weren't prepared. And as soon as it happened, they regretted it. Um, so don't carry those sins on thinking that this event won't occur and that you have ample time because we don't. Um, so, yeah, just prepare your hearts, fam. Love you guys so very much. I will see you uh, in the next video. Before I go, the gospel, believe in Jesus. That's the bottom line, man. Believe in Jesus that he died on the cross and he was who he said he was. Don't demote him to a prophet. Don't demote him to just a man. Don't demote him to not existing. He is the son of God, the son of the living God. He is God in the flesh, the word in flesh, in the image of the invisible God. All the characteristics, all the spirit, everything of God is in him. Um, and if you believe that with your whole heart, whole mind, body, soul, and spirit, you will be saved. Repent, turn away from your sins. Don't walk in your sins and try to claim Jesus. It doesn't work that way. Um, we are saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, but we do have to walk in obedience. So the Bible says in John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. So don't say you love Jesus and disobey all his commandments. Don't say, Lord, I love you, and then do everything that doesn't represent him. Um, cause that's just hypocrisy. We have to be very careful of hypocrisy. Um, I love you all so very much. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.